Good morning, Henry. Come on, let's go to the green. How's life here in Sassau? Much the same as in Scarlet's. That is, before everything. It's quieter now. Most of the work has been done, and everyone is waiting to see what the harvest will be like. Then everyone will be on their feet from dawn to dusk. I pray it'll be a good harvest, so we have supplies for winter and enough to seed in spring. God's truth. A couple of bad harvests and we'd be in danger of famine. Well, let's hope it will be good. Every grain counts. Especially now, with all sorts of bandits roaming the country, and a great army, too. I hope Sir Radzig and Sir Hannes get it all sorted out before the harvest. If those marauders carry on, they'll plunder the whole province. And then where will we be? Well, the best thing would be to hide the supplies. Bury them underground, so the bandits don't find them. But what if they threaten the villagers? Most people would be happier to give up their supplies than have their farms burnt down or their livestock herded off. Livestock can be hidden in the woods. Pa told me about it once. Maybe. But you can't hide a farmhouse. Or whole families. What if they take your children and threaten to cripple them? Or the farmers? You can't do much work in the fields with your arms broken. And in the winter, it's even worse. They might as well dig your grave. Sir Radzig would never allow that to happen, though. He'd come with his garrison. And those bastards who harassed his subjects would soon be hanging from the nearest tree. I'd be happier, though, if they all moved on and left us in peace. What if they don't move on, though? Then the only answer is cold steel. You men and your endless fighting. How are things with the infirmary? Did they give you a bit more coin, at least? Unfortunately not. They said there'll be no more until St. Havel's Day. But that's still a long way off. I know. On St. Havel's Day, the payments come from the surrounding villages and the outlying farms. Some of them are supposed to pay in chickens, eggs, or other things, but a lot pay in Groshen. Then they might give us more. Since we're going to the market square, I could buy some meat at the butcher's. You buy that often? I thought you said you had to save every groschen you can. That's true, but you wouldn't believe the things those monks think up. How's that? You know they're forbidden to eat red meat. It's a sin. Saint Benedict forbade it. Oh, I didn't know that. Neither did I until recently, but that's not all. The thing is, they have an exception to the rule. They can eat red meat if they're sick so they recover faster. Then, it's not a sin. So some of them are always coming along with all sorts of ailments, so they can lie around in the infirmary and eat meat. Of course, the monks have precedence, so I have to go to the butchers. And then, there's not enough money for other things. Well, well, you learn something new every day. I've even heard tell that there was a monk who tried to keep pigs in a pond at one time. Why on earth would he do that? to prove they're water creatures. The monks are allowed to eat water creatures, you see. Not only fish, but even beavers and the like. <laughs> That's good. I'd never come up with something like that. And how did it end up? I don't know. Maybe they drowned. That's good, though. I must remember that one. Tell me, how is it being in the service of Sir Radzig? Well, it's a wonder he took me on at all after I lost his sword in Scalis. But it's great for someone like me. I lost everything, and he gave me a second chance. And even a new home of sorts, if you know what I mean. I understand. Not to worry, I'll be fine. I'll go then. But no dice playing in Kuttenberg. Remember what you promised me. Stop your nagging. No. I'm glad you found your feet with Sir Radzig. 
that you found your place in the world again and that... Yeah. Don't worry. You'll surely find your place too, eventually. I hope so. Listen, when she visits you, the Virgin Mary, what does she look like? Like I said, like that picture above the altar. She just appears in a kind of golden glow, in a blue cloak. And then? Then she beckons to me, and things start to appear. Pictures of all kinds. They look like the paintings in church, but moving glowing with fire and lots of colours and this golden light. My, that's really something. How is Matthias doing? No change. He's lying in a fever and nothing helps. I'm really afraid for him. He'll get better, don't you worry. He's a tough little bugger. No fever is going to beat him. I hope you're right. Actually, it does look like his fever is dropping a bit. But maybe that's just wishful thinking. Johanker, what are you actually going to do when we get to the market square? Actually, I haven't thought about it much. I have to pass on the message from Our Lady to the people. So... So I'll stand somewhere and tell them what I saw in my dream. Like the itinerant preachers who are always wandering around the land. I see. And have you ever done anything like that? No, I haven't. But it can't be all that hard, can it? I couldn't say. But I'm sure you can do it. Our Lady will guide me. Right, girl, time to... What should I say first? Something like... Good people. That might work. Henry, I'm a bit worried. I never spoke to people like that before. I've no idea what to say. They'll all laugh at me. Have no fear. You can do it. If you didn't have what it took, Our Lady wouldn't have chosen you, would she? I suppose you're right. But it's still hard for me. Think of Matthias. You want him to recover, don't you? Yes. If I don't let her down... She'll surely heal him for me. That's the spirit. Enough beating around the bush. Go and let him have it. All right. Here goes. God be with you. The, <clears throat> the Virgin Mary. The Virgin Mary came to me. In a dream. And she showed me things, things I've never seen before. A great city, a great and beautiful city it was, great and beautiful, with many, many spires, tall spires, golden in the sunlight. And around the city was a mighty wall. All this she showed to me. But then the city was suddenly engulfed in flames. The earth began to shake and the gate burst open. Holes opened up in the ground and from them beasts of hell leapt forth. They broke down the walls and stormed the city through the broken gate. And the beasts hunted down all the sinners. They sank 
their fangs into their burning flesh and tore them to pieces mercilessly. And the sinners screamed and tried to flee them, but it was in vain. But then Our Lady appeared, Mary, the Holy Mother of God. She covered the whole city in her cloak, smothered the flames, and drove out the beasts. The penitent sinners came out of the city, knelt before the Virgin in prayer, and thanked her for their salvation. That is the vision that came to me. And I believe this message was not meant for me alone. It was a warning to us all. We are those sinners and we must once again build those mighty walls. Not from stone or wood, but from virtue and love for our neighbor. And whoever has sinned and acted unrighteously must repent and change their ways. That last doesn't hold Isn't back. she that last? But this work for Brother Nicodemus. No the girl is right. Those like a pair of birds, all right. I reckon she was telling us the blessed Virgin. What a prophecy. The Virgin Mary said... Nonsense. Just another charlatan. And I, I didn't know who to go to until I heard you speak. Not now. Please. I can't. But you were just talking about helping your neighbor. Oh, all right. But quickly, I beg you. It's about my husband, Ambrose, the tailor. He's good to me. He's an honest tradesman and a skilled one. But he keeps playing dice. He sits at that table late into the night, and more than once he lost a small fortune. I'm sorry to hear that, but I don't know how I could help. I want him to stop, but he won't listen to me. I'm at a loss what to do. I thought maybe if you were to go and have a word with him... Oh... All right. I'll come and see you when I have some time to spare. Thank you. Thank you kindly. My word, Johanka. That speech of yours on the square. I swear I never heard anything like it in my life. Let's talk about it later. Right now I... Guta, the Sassau tailor's wife, came to talk to me and she was quite desperate. Did you hear? Yes, I heard everything. So give her some advice then. But I don't know what to tell her. Our lady didn't prepare me for anything like that. Oh, that's what you wanted, isn't it? Your words didn't fall on deaf ears. And now you can't let people down when they come to you. I... I suppose you're right. We ought to try and do something. We? Be quiet and think. We have to find a way. Jesus, you're really full of holy fire. Stop blaspheming and start thinking how we can get Ambrose to give up his dice playing. Well, I've always found a good punch in the mouth can do a lot to change a man's mind. Thanks for that contribution, but I don't think Guta came to me because she wanted her husband crippled. Yeah, all right. It's what Fritz would do, though. And that's why I'm asking you, and not Fritz. Hmm. Well, supposing Ambrose were to lose enough to make him regret it. 
if he were to lose something really important. Mal was used to scold me by saying, one day you'll go too far and then you'll be sorry. That's it, Henry. Ambrose has to realize for himself how he's harming others, and most of all his wife and himself. Thank you. Uh, glad to be of help. But I can't go anywhere. Never mind playing dice in taverns. I've too much work to do. But you could. All right. I'll see what I can do. Thank you, Henry. Go and see the tailor's wife and sort it out with her. I have to go back now. Take care. I'm glad you stopped by. Jesus Christ, your clothes. Were you assaulted? Damn bandits, may they burn in hell. Your hanker sent me. She asked me to help you with your trouble. She did? That's wonderful, but she said she'd come herself. Well, she's up to her ears in work, and besides... We figured your husband wouldn't pay much attention to a woman, since he doesn't even listen to you. Hmm, I'm afraid that's true. What now, though? Well, Johanka thought it would help if Ambrose saw how playing dice was no good either for himself or for you. Ha! <laughs> I've been telling him off about it for years to no avail. I even took his dice several times. But he always gets new ones. You won't get anywhere telling him off. Ambrose has to realise it for himself. If he lost everything he has to me, that would teach him a lesson. And then I'd talk to him man to man. Oh, God, no. I want him to stop playing, not to lose the roof over our heads. No, don't worry. Whatever I win from him, I'll give it back to you. But first, he really has to believe he's lost everything. Do you swear, by the Virgin Mary, to give everything back? I swear I'll give back every last groschen, as the Virgin Mary is my witness. Very well, then. If you think it'll help, take him for everything he has. Where can I find Ambrose? He's not here now. He's getting ready for a trip to Kutenberg, on some business or other. No doubt you'll find him at the inn. Uh, you'd better hurry if you want to catch him. He said he wants to leave soon. Do you think he'll want to play with me? Well, he promised not long ago he'd quit. But I'll believe it when I see it. He'll keep playing, especially when he's had a drink or two. And if he's feeling lucky, he'll lose his head entirely and play till the early hours. All right. Thanks for the advice. Goodbye. Talking utter nonsense. Everyone believed him, though. 
until you put him in his place. It all evens out in the end anyway. Yeah, and I'm not the brightest star in the sky. Yeah. How's it going? Good luck then. Let's have a word about the price. Well, we can try it. Aye. That would do it. God be with you. Goodbye. See you later. Yeah. How's it going?
Well, well, good man, Ambrose. Yes? Is there something I could do for you? I heard you were about to leave for Kuttenberg. Aye. So Sebastian von Berg ordered new clothes, and he won't settle for anything but the best. I have to go and buy some fine linen, brocade, and other things. I'm taking 600 groschen to pay for it all. I'll make him the finest garment ever. Ah, I see. Well, Sir Sebastian's a man who doesn't like to be disappointed. True indeed. I'll be on my way just as soon as the horse is shod and the wagon hitched up. Oh, damn it. Here. I'll need just a good 1,300 groschen to get I'll him drunk and right have away. enough to wager. I'd like something to eat. God be with you. What can I do for you? Let's have a drink together, eh? Happily. If you're paying. Uh, I'll be back a bit later. Good luck then. Let's talk about the price. Hmm. All right, so. Aye. For that amount, I can be persuaded. Let's have a drink together to pass the time while you're waiting, eh? On me. That's kind of you, lad. Take care. Good health. May it serve you. You look like a fellow who's been around. Tell me, what's going on in the countryside? Are the roads safe? Oh, it's safer in the province now. 
There was a pack of enemy cutthroats holed up in Pribis Labitz, north of Talmberg. Mercenaries, bandits, cumans, and other rabble. But we attacked them and smashed them to pieces. So yes, the roads are safer now. My word. And who led the attack? Sir Radzig Kobola, the royal hetman. Let's drink to Sir Radzig. Yes, to the bold Sir Radzig Kobila. And Captain Robard of Talmberg was there too, fighting bravely. We must drink to him too. To the brave Captain Robard. But there was a band of brigands on the rampage in the province. They attacked the stud farm at Neuhof, killed old Smill, the owner, and torched the stables. So it's true then. I heard some talk about it, but I thought it was exaggerated. Hmm. Maybe I should take an escort with me. No, not to worry. Fortunately, I caught up with those bastards and put a stop to their pillaging. That's good news indeed. Let's drink to your accomplishment. It was no easy matter, I can tell you. They were cleverly holed up, but they weren't smart enough for me. Ha! To my wits! Ha <laughs> ha! To your wits! Sigismund's hordes attacked Scalitz, raised the castle, pillaged the whole area, and slaughtered a lot of people. I heard, lad. I heard. God have mercy on those poor souls. I lost my family that day. They killed my mother and father. Let's drink to their memory then. To your dear mother. To Ma. And your good father. To Pa. Did you hear what happened in Merhoyed? No. What happened there? Some bandits attacked the locals. God have mercy. It seems that's the lot of decent folk on this earth. Some fucker thinks he can take what he wants by the sword, and there's damn little you can do about it. Ah, but the villagers weren't such an easy mark. They stood up to them and put up a fight. They even managed to take one captive. <laughs> Good on them. That's what those bastards deserve. But it didn't end with that. Some pestilence broke out. And people thought it was the plague. God have mercy on us. It turned out it wasn't the plague, though. Those murdering bastards poisoned the wells there. The low-down whoresons. They ought to hang. The lot of them. Let's drink to those brave souls in Merhoyed. They stood up to a pack of cutthroats and captured one. Glory to them! Not even the pestilence could break them. With the help of Brother Nicodemus, they recovered. Glory to your Brother Nicodemus too. Aye, and may trouble pass them by now and leave them to enjoy the peace they deserve. Aye, peace to all people with good souls. I think I overdid it a bit. So, you're going to Kuttenberg, eh? That's right. That's nice. I've never been there. What's it like? Ah, it's great, lad. Grand it is. Kuttenberg is a big town. Strong walls. And more churches than you count on your fingers. Even the king himself has a palace there. And it's packed with people. When there's a fair, the whole town is on its feet. You've never seen the like. But the city elders are troubled now. Sigismund and his army are camped near the town. And nothing good can come of that. The devil take that damn Sigismund. He's done damage enough here already.
My word, lad, what's got into you? I'm from Scalis. Sigismund's army laid waste to the place. Oh, I'm sorry. That must have been awful. Awful hardly describes it. I tell you about it, but first I'd have to drink. A lot. Then let's drink! Now, I ask myself, Ambrose, I ask myself, why are we here? In a savin? Well, where else can a man find some culture in these bars? No, 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 no. I meant more like in the tavern. But why now? No, why, why, why here? Why here? Because I was waiting here before Kuhlenberg. Something like that. And why? Well, you came and started this whatever. But why did I do it? Was there a reason? Is there... Is there a plan? A God's plan? Ah, uh, difference is this. Did you come here of your own free will? Or did you have a feeling you had to? Or the world would stop turning? No, I always have this really weird feeling. Like the whole world is just standing still, watching and waiting what I'll do before doing anything. Nobody as much as lifts a finger until I do. I used to have the same feeling when I was younger. It passed, though. Oh, but it makes me feel all uneasy and jittery, like you know, some, some jittery thing. And if I don't do something, then it stays the same. Everything stays the same. Nothing changes. I know what'll help you, lad. There's nothing to it. It's easy. It's... What was it? Ah, yes! Booze. Let's drink. I won't drink. I won't be forced. But as it is, the world does what it wants with me, and there's nothing I can do about it. And uh, I was ah, actually, fuck it. It can't get any worse. Let's fucking drink. Those are the words of a man. Good help. I'm the fastest this dice thrower in the in the province. Thank you.
Sí, sí. Is there somewhere I could sleep here? Certainly. For how long? Just the one. All right. Here you are. You'll like it here. Good luck. Three sixes. Look what I've got for you. You'll love this. Ooh. Ambrose, you hound. What got into you yesterday? Me? Nothing. We drank a bit, all right. Quite a bit. And then I went to sleep. What? You don't remember? You got as drunk as a lord. Started shouting that you were the greatest dice master in Bohemia and that you'd show everyone. No one had the nerve to tackle you, so you insisted I had to give you a game. But you lost. And then you got really worked up and wanted to save your reputation. We ended up playing until the early hours. Damn. I don't remember a thing. Did I win? Oh, oh, you did, a few times. And then you lost everything. Oh, fuck. Everything? Everything. The whole 600 groschen you had for buying cloth in Kuttenberg. Christ in heaven. Oh, God, what am I going to do now? I have to get that money back. Actually, it wasn't by chance that I ran into you. It was the Virgin Mary who sent me to you. What are you talking about? Are you trying to make a fool of me? No, no. I mean it. 
My friend Johanka has been visited in her dreams by Our Lady, and she's been passing her message on to the people about amending their ways and repenting for their sins, like playing games of hazard, for example. You see how easily you were tempted into wagering everything you had on dice? You're bringing misfortune down on yourself and your family. Yeah, yeah, you're right. I, I got carried away. But what am I to do now? Repent and do penance for your sins. Ask God for forgiveness and swear by the Blessed Virgin never to pick up dice again. You're right. My passion for dice has gone too far. I'll do what you say. And give me those dice so they don't tempt you to play again. I'll throw them down a well where they can't put sinful thoughts in your head. But those aren't just any old dice that you can get anywhere. They bring luck. Well, mostly. Ambrose. I don't play with them much. I keep them hidden away for special occasions. Oh, all right. Here you are. Listen, Henry. The money you won from me, do you think maybe I could get it back? I've learned my lesson, I swear. But now I have to go and buy that cloth, and I can't pay for it. I'm glad you've seen the error of your ways, but you're not getting your coin back. That wouldn't be much of a lesson. This way, you won't forget in a hurry. I beg you, please. If I don't buy that cloth, I won't be able to make those clothes for Sir Sebastian. That could finish me as a tailor. Oh, all right. If it means so much to you, have your coin back. But go to church as soon as you get to Kuttenberg and beg God for forgiveness. And say a prayer from me while you're at it. I will, Henry, I will. In the finest church in Kuttenberg. Thank you. Bye. This is the... You won't be hurting anyone anymore, as long as you stay there. God's... Well, how did it go with that husband of mine? Well, we sat down and talked, and in the end, I talked him out of playing dice. Did you? Mother of God, that's wonderful news. How on earth did you do it? Look here. I'll tell you what happened, but you mustn't breathe a word of it. All right. Ambrose got really drunk. I took his money, and in the morning, I told him he'd lost it all at dice. He took it really hard, and he promised he'd never gamble again. Aha. Uh -huh. uh, well, if you think he really means it. And what about the money? Did you give it back to him? 
Yeah, I gave it back to him so he can buy what he needs. That's wonderful. Thank you, Henry. Yeah! Yeah. You. I see you look much better. No, I feel much better. Then I heard it was all down to you. Thank you. If you ever need to know about anything that's going on in Sasau, come and see me. There's nothing much happens here without my knowledge. Thomas is my name. See you later. Good heavens, what's all this? Candles? Pictures? Someone's made quite a shrine here. I can't wait to hear what Yahanka thinks of this. God be with you, Henry. I went to see the tailor's wife, like you wanted. Oh, and how did it go? I think it turned out well. Ambrose admitted he was overdoing it with the dice playing and promised to quit. That's great news, Henry. You've helped him and his wife a lot. Thank you. You're a true friend. I think this is exactly what the Blessed Virgin wants from us. How are things going otherwise? You wouldn't believe what happened. One of the bathhouse wenches came to me. Oh? What does she want? She said she wanted to find a different job. Something more virtuous. She said she decided to change her life after listening to me on the square. See what you're capable of? Our Lady didn't pick you for nothing. You help everyone around you. I think you're really great, Yahanka. That's very sweet of you, Henry. Thank you. If only there were more like that, though. How do you mean? I mean, more people who want to find a better, more virtuous life. If only we could help them to do that. Hmm. I might know of someone. There's this prostitute in Ledechko. Adela, her name is. 
And how do you know her? I happened across her by chance when I was tracking the Neuhof raiders. Hmm. Don't look at me like that. She was mixed up with one of them and I had to question her. I wouldn't say she was particularly happy there either. That sounds... promising, Henry. We should try and help her. Hmm. But how? I'm not sure. But maybe we could persuade her to give up what she's doing and find a different job. If she works at the baths, she'll surely have knowledge of some basic things. What basic things? Laundry? No. She'd know about healing wounds, health-giving decoctions, bloodletting and the like. And I could certainly use a second pair of hands here. Well, if you think so, I can go there and see what I can do. Henry, please try and convince her. I can find a place for her here. Goodbye. God be with you, Henry. My word, Johanka. That speech of yours on the square. <laughs> I swear I never heard anything like it in my life. So, what do you think? Was it all right? I'm at a loss for words. It was great. It sounded almost like it wasn't you at all. I never expected you'd say such things. Flames, a golden city, beasts of hell. It was awe-inspiring. You even put the fear of God into me. I heaved a sigh of relief when the Virgin Mary came and everything ended well. It was the best sermon I ever heard. I mean it. Oh, thank you, Henry. I don't even know how I did it. I just opened my mouth and the words came by themselves. What about other people? What did they say? I'd say they liked it. Everyone was quite spellbound. Oh, that's a good thing. Isn't it? And do you think it made sense? That it was clear what I wanted to say? Oh yes, clear as day. It was a warning about our sinfulness. If we're virtuous, Our Lady will protect us against the demons. Yes, that's what I think her message was. Thank you, Henry. I'm glad you were there with me. So am I. I wouldn't have missed it for the world. How is Matthias doing? I think he's getting better. It looks like his fever's fallen. Sometimes we even talk for a while. I just hope he doesn't relapse again. Nah, he'll pull out of it. You'll see. You know, I could get you some potion to help calm you down so you can sleep. Thanks. But there's no point in it. Brother Nicodemus already tried and it didn't help. Oh. I see. Where did all those pretty things outside your door come from? People have been bringing things and leaving them here. Sometimes they even pray. Flowers, a few coins, some food and various bits and pieces. People give whatever they have. Some of them like candles, too. Why are they doing it? Well... I think it's like some veneration to the Blessed Virgin. And they come seeking advice, too. Asking about this and that and what they should do. And even worse, they want me to bless them. Someone asked me to bless them before travelling to Beneshov. Others asked me to bless women about to give birth so their children would be healthy and nothing bad would happen. And it seems to me there's more and more coming. I'm at a loss what to do. I wasn't expecting this at all. Well, that's a good thing, isn't it? People respect you and believe what you told them. They're showing their support. I... I suppose so. But I don't bless anyone, in case you were thinking. Sure. That really wouldn't be a good idea. Of course not. What? Do I look like a bishop? <laughs> no. And he'd have a fit if he saw something like that. 
I see things are looking up for you. You even got a roof over your head. I'm glad you don't have to sleep in that stable anymore. And it seems the overseer coughed up a groschen or two in the end, eh? Ah, uh, yes. I'm glad too, but it's a little bit complicated. Monastery affairs, you know. I won't bother you with the details. What about the custodian? Is he leaving you alone now? Yes, yes. He hasn't been here for a while. Can we just talk about something else, please? What's got into you? You're not yourself at all. Is something wrong? Oh, Henry. If only you knew. What's the matter? Sir Sebastian. He kept coming here. Always bringing me gifts, a dress, a piece of jewellery. He was so persistent. I was completely worn out from everything. And he was the only one here who showed me any sympathy. <laughs> any understanding. He was quite kind, actually. And then once... <laughs> more than once, I... went with him. Then he had this room cleared out. And gave it to me. You're not to blame. These things happen. He's a noble, and he can do whatever he feels like. Took advantage of you. But it's all over. I swear. Since I started having those dreams, I haven't been with him. I sold all the things he gave me and bought food and supplies for the sick. I still feel terrible about it. I think maybe it's because of me that Matthias isn't getting better. If I had been more virtuous... Now don't be so hard on yourself. The important thing is you ended it and you tried to make amends. I'm so ashamed, Henry. Please forgive me and don't tell Matthias or anyone else I beg you. I won't breathe a word. I promise. Thank you, Henry. Thank you. I feel relieved for telling you. You're so understanding. Goodbye. Yeah.
Yeah. If you want to go if you want to go inside, you'll have to wait until tomorrow. Oh yeah? You think a knight in shining armor is gonna come to your room? Christ! Is that Adela crying in that room? Ah, uh, it's a bit unpleasant. Unpleasant? That fella is beating her up. The gentleman is a little on the rough side, but he pays well, and the bruises will heal soon enough. I want to talk to her. You can't now. The door stays locked, and the key stays safely with me. Wait until tomorrow. What did you say? I said you're an animal, and I won't see that. You call me an animal? Is that Let me into her right now, or you'll make me very angry. Be angry, then. Better than to anger Goodman Henslin. I paid for you and I'll get what I paid for. 
She could be killed in there. And do you think the bailiff wouldn't hold you responsible, sitting here and doing nothing to stop it? You really think she could be? God almighty. Here, take the key. Please, help her. Stop your damn carry on. You want another? Do you? You won't get away with this. Oh yeah? You think a knight in shining armor is gonna come to your rescue? Nobody gives a- What the fuck are you doing here? Are you yanking my pizzle? I said get out! I'm not going anywhere. I'm here for Adela. For Adela? But I paid for that whore! Don't call her a whore. She fucks for money, you idiot! She is a whore! Now you've fucked up. <clears throat> Cunt! <sighs> Come on then. you in I don't need any trouble couldn't you have gone and sorted it out somewhere else with him what in God's name have you done I I, I saved you oh my god Henslin will kill me if Marouche doesn't first everything will be all right Henry if it wasn't for the fact that you saved Hinnick I'd slap your face Leave this place. I'll help you. What? Why? What are you on about? Why do you live like this? Why don't you just leave? How? Like I should just drop everything here, pack my things and go off to see someone I don't even know? Why not? It's madness. It's like... Starting all over from the beginning. And why did you become, uh, you know... A... a prostitute? Yeah. If you're expecting to hear some touching tale about a poor girl tossed around by fate, you'll be disappointed. I didn't want a husband, and I needed money. So just for money? What do you think I do it for? Love? Have you got a problem with that? No. Everyone has to make a living, but you don't have to be a... a bath maid. So what else should I do, in your opinion? You can just find yourself a different livelihood. Why? What's wrong with the one I have? What about when you get older? Do you think the men will still come to you? That's true, unfortunately.
You can't go on like this forever. You could catch some nasty disease. What do you know about such things? I've seen plenty, believe me. Maybe too much. Oh, sorry. I, I try not to think too much about that. Well, maybe you should. The apothecary in Ratai could tell you a lot about the ailments people come to him with. I'm still not sure. But you're a pariah. No one will talk to you. What do I care about anyone else? Let them look out for themselves and I'll do the same. You won't always be able to manage on your own, whether you like it or not. So what? Do you want to end up like Hinek? <sighs> God knows how he'd have ended up if it hadn't been for you. See now? You know, you might be right about some things. So you'll leave it? But how? Where would I go? What would I live on? Wouldn't you like to help in the infirmary at Sasau Monastery? Would they let me? You're a bathmaid who knows something about healing. They'd be glad to have you. But where will I live? There, of course. It's modest, but you'll have everything you need. I'm not used to much anyway. See then? I reckon you've nothing to worry about. All right. Will we go right away? We can go right now. Come on then. All right. I'll just say farewell to the girls and pack a few things. Mother of God, <laughs> I'm all in a flutter. To pack up and go, just like that. You're doing the right thing. You'll see. God be with you. Is that all you've got? You'll get woke for. Come here, Lily Liver. Bring it on! You call that combat? Go weak in the knees, have you? the best you can do. What's the matter? Lost your balls? You'll <laughs> get one for. Yeah. Jesus Christ! Oh dear. That hurt. Ugh. Call that combat.
What's the matter? Come on. Ah. Here. Had enough? Are you all right? Yes, I'm fine. It's you they were after, mostly. And are you all right? Ah, just a scratch or two. Those idiots didn't know who they were taking on. Good. The sooner we go, the better. I don't want to stay here any longer. 
Let's go then. Go be with you. Here we are. Give it a while and you'll be happy here. Believe me. Oh, Henry. I'm starting to have a good feeling about this. Maybe I'll really find happiness here. I'm sure you will. Johanka will take care of you. She's very good at that. You know, you're the first one to do something for me. Without expecting anything. And I don't have anything to give you. Unless... If you wanted. For one last time, together. You don't have to thank me, and you certainly don't have to offer your body to anyone. Anyone at all. Oh, thank you, Henry. Thank you. I went to Ledetsko like you asked me. And? How did it turn out? You were right. It turned out well with Adela. I persuaded her to leave her... her trade and find a more virtuous job. She's here for you. That's great news. I promised her you'd take care of her and I brought her here. She'll help you take care of the sick and injured, like you wanted. You did a great job, Henry. Thank you. Of course I'll take care of her. We can't let her down now. And how are things going here? Hmm. Much the same as always. There are always wounded and sick people. I'm on my feet from morning till night. But Matthias is better. I'm glad about that. There's these troublemakers, though. Troublemakers? Aye. While you were gone, some thugs came here and kicked around the gifts that people brought. Then they vanished before the guards got here. Oh? Who were they? I didn't see them at it, but there's some fellas hanging around now by the entrance to the monastery. Maybe that's them? And whenever I go into town, they take liberties with me. Take liberties how? Did they hurt you? No. They just make all sorts of offensive comments on account of me speaking on the square. And when someone comes to see me, they make trouble for them. So now, almost no one wants to come here. Maybe you could have a word with them? All right. I'll see what I can do. Thanks, Henry. Let me know how it goes, all right? God be with you. All anyone knows you might be some wild woman of the woods. Ha! Not likely. We've already got all the wild woodland women.
Take care now. Your uncle's brain is out. Yeah. Good afternoon. I'm interested in your uh, services. So what are you interested in? Uh, I'll certainly need a physician to treat my wounds. Then a hot bath and uh, launder in my clothes. I'm sure you'll be extremely satisfied. Goodbye. Get in by her nonsense. Hey! God be with you, my good man. Likewise, pilgrim. And to what do we owe the pleasure of your visit? Who sent you here? Sent us? No one but the Holy Spirit and our Christian duty. I see. Well... My Christian duty prompts me to give a bit of coin to those in need. What do you say? Are you in need? Agree? More! Hmm. Well, thanks for the, uh, arms. Listen, here's how it is. Some of the important citizens here don't care for Johanka talking nonsense about visitations from the Virgin Mary. And there are certain good wives who think she's up to no good. They don't like it that their husbands are hanging around here. And there's talk that she's got something with a custodian and who knows who else. And we're just here to warn decent people about the iniquities going on here. Uh-huh. Is that so? 
Well, now you've warned me, you can clear off. Well, I'm afraid we don't want to do that. I'm in no mood for listening to horseshit from the likes of you. You're gonna regret causing trouble for your hanker. <laughs> Is that the best you can do? Is that all you've got? I'll slaughter you! I'm going to enjoy this! You call that combat? What's the matter? Come on! You're dead. All right, come here, Lily Liver. I'll slaughter you. Is that all you got? Gone weak at the knees, have you? What's the matter? Come on! Bring it on! I'll slaughter you. Bring it on. Yeah. <laughs> what happened with your hunker? Some thugs turned up here and made a mess. Did you see them? How come you didn't stop them? I didn't see them. I wasn't here. You weren't at your post? How come? I had to go for a shit, if you must know. Oh, that's quite a coincidence. They must have been waiting until my back was turned, see? Upstart. Good luck to you. I dealt with those troublemakers. They won't be coming back in a hurry. Thanks, Henry. I thought they'd never go. You didn't say anything about it to the custodian, did you?
Ah, he knows nothing about it. You don't think I need the help of Sir Sebastian to deal with a few thugs, do you? Good. I wouldn't want him to think I'm in distress. Oh? Why is that? Ah, nothing. It's not important. Listen, there's some merchant staying at the Wagoner's Inn who's been asking after me. Would you go with me to see him? I know those thugs are gone and it should be safe now, but... Of course I'll go. It's only a stone's throw after all. Pavelov Colin, I believe you were asking for me? Thank you for coming, Johanka. I hope you're not offended by this meeting place. I apologize, but I feel a little confused in your presence. It's your preaching. In truth, I don't know whether I'm speaking to you or the Virgin Mary. I'm sorry to say this is just plain old Johanka from Scalix. Flesh and blood. And this is Henry. He's telling the truth. And sometimes he tells a little more truth than necessary. What is it you wanted to see me about, Pavel? Divine Providence led me back to Sasau after many years, and by the same grace I heard the words you preached, and my eyes were opened. Just as the Blessed Virgin wanted. Are you troubled by some sin, Pavel? I've encountered many things in my life, but I never before heard a true prophetess speaking. And you're right. It came to me that it was time for me to make amends for my sin of long ago, and I decided to do some deed for the common good. You speak very eloquently, Pavel, though a bit mysteriously. I'm not sure I understand you. I notice you have an armed escort with you. Henry is my protector, helper, and good friend. Because not everyone in Sassal hears the words of the Virgin with the same piety as you. This may be yet another ray of divine providence. You see, I'm looking for someone with an adventurous but honest soul. Someone who would find some wealth that I lost and donate it all to the deserving in Sassau. Aha! Uh -huh. Henry here could be just the man you need. Is that so, Henry? Well, I can't say I'm any the wiser from all this talk. Not to worry. I'll happily tell you more. Johanka, I'd like to thank you kindly for your visit. I don't wish to detain you any longer. If you feel we've said all that needs to be said, I'll leave you and Henry to discuss things alone. So, Johanka is an exceptional person with an important mission, wouldn't you say? Well, I'm glad people see her that way, but I just try and help her as an ordinary friend who's concerned about her. A job like any other, is it? Anyway, what is it you want help with? It's like this. In the last year of Emperor Charles's reign, I came here to Sassau to close a profitable deal. But it didn't turn out entirely as planned, and I was obliged to hide some of my money in the woods near the town. Who would even imagine that in the ruins of an old settlement lies a real treasure trove? I tried to go and recover it myself, and I can be glad that I didn't pay for that attempt with my life, as you've probably noticed. Yes. You look like you were mauled by a pack of enraged squirrels. The truth is even more absurd. I simply lost my footing and tumbled downhill. No doubt another divine sign that I ought to leave the search to someone such as yourself. Your guardian angel must have had his work cut out, keeping you from running into Cuman patrol. Where is this treasure of yours, then? I could get the dog to sniff it out. I'll describe the way there. You can enter the woods between the quarry and the marshland. You can see the spot from here. There's a small stream that flows into the river. Following it upstream seems simple enough, but actually it took me a long time getting up that slope. As I already said, I tripped and rolled quite a way down, after which I considered it wiser to abandon my search. As if that weren't enough, I lost my hat there. Well, maybe it'll still be there, unless it's been devoured by some boar with good taste in clothing. Hmm, who knows? If you should find it, you're welcome to have it. As you can see, I've already got a new one. Anyway, at the point where I fell, there's a forest track that joins the stream. If you follow it closely, and you'll need to keep your eyes peeled, you'll come upon the ruins of a settlement. 
And in one of those ruins, the money is stashed. Right, quarry, stream, path, ruins. I should be able to remember that. And I should bring the treasure to you. Actually, I'd rather you made the donation for me. I'm in no shape for running around now. Just come back when you've found it, or not. Meanwhile, I'll give some thought to who we shall donate the money to. Agreed? Well, how could I refuse a pleasant stroll in the countryside? I'll be happy to go and look for your stash. You are indeed an adventurous soul, Henry. As I recall, I hid there not only a large amount of Groschen, but also something else. Nothing valuable, just a dagger which will be rusty by now. Please bring that to me too, as a memento. Good luck, Henry, and thank you. Can you tell me again precisely where this treasure is? In the woods by Sasau. I can't say quite precisely. It's been a long time since I hid it, and my own attempts at recovering it ended as they did. Most of the way you have to go uphill along the stream that flows into the river next to the Sasau quarry. After a while, you come upon a forest trail that joins with the stream. You're young and agile, so you shouldn't go tumbling head over heels there as I did. Maybe I could go there on horseback. It's not ideal terrain for horse riding. A donkey would be better. Anyway, from there you should follow the trail deeper into the woods. I doubt much has changed there over the years. When you reach a small ruined settlement, you're at the right place. The treasure is hidden in one of the ruined houses. I can't remember which. You'll have to search. Well, couldn't you just donate some other money? It seems peculiar, I admit. But this treasure has more than a monetary value. It's the embodiment of my guilt, as Johanka said. We are those sinners, and we must rebuild those walls. That's why it must be this money, even if it were only one groschen. When you were talking about donating the money for the common good, what did you have in mind? The Virgin Mary chose Sassau as the place to reveal her message, didn't she? You don't have to go any further than the Rathaus or the Church of St. Martin. Both places carry the same weight for me. The important thing is, I know Bailiff Hashek or Father Fabian will handle the donation better than, say, the monastery. Wouldn't you say Johanka's infirmary is working for the common good? Certainly. But its financial affairs are handled by the monastery, which has a very poor record in that respect. Then you can go and explain to Johanka and the wounded yourself that they'll suffer on just because you're worried the monastery will build more scaffolding for your money. That's not how I meant it. It's just that, as a Colleen councillor, I had a certain property dispute with the monastery. And you'd let my former Scalit's neighbours and Johanka suffer on because of some personal grudge? Do you really think the overseer would give them nothing when it's his duty? I'd rather the Rathaus or the church had the money. Uh, I suppose you're right. I'll allow a donation to the monastery. Tell me again about this treasure. I don't quite understand its history. I can't say it's something I care to repeat, but as you wish, I'll spare you any unnecessary details. It really is quite a straightforward story. Many years ago, I was engaged in long-distance trade, and my partners and I made quite a lot of money. I confess that our practices weren't terribly honest. Oh? How's that? Well, we sold short measures of cloth, mixed sand with salt, and gave fictitious origin to wines. We passed off local wines as Italian and diluted the good ones with water. It was inevitable that our deceitful dealings would catch up with us, or rather with me. My associates arranged a deal here in Sassau that they contrived to be the last in my life. I am by nature a cautious man, so I wasn't taken by surprise. I was quite prepared for their trap, so I let my associates get caught in their own ambush. And in case any of them should get out of it, I hid some of the money in the woods. Upon my return to Colleen, the council there accepted the remainder of the money with gratitude and absolved me of any blame. They even allowed me to buy myself a bailiff's office. Since King Wenceslas acceded to the throne, I have lived an honest life and enjoyed a respected station. For that reason, too, I forgot about my treasure until now. But your deed caught up with you at last. Just so. He who has acted unrighteously must make amends.
Good boy. That's my boy. God be with you. Certainly be a fine church here. Look what I've got for you. You'll love this. Here we are. <laughs> God be with you. Good luck then. Just take care. Can we do something about the price? Well, we can try it. What about this? Well, a little more, and we'll call it a deal. I, for that amount, I could be persuaded.
Yeah. Yeah. I see the quarry and the marshland. Now I just have to find the stream that feeds into the river. There's the quarry, and there's the marshland. Now, where's the stream? Here's the stream. I've got to follow its course upstream, deeper into the woods. I reckon I can't be even halfway. That forest trail must be higher. like this is where Pavel went tumbling.
Look what I've got for you. You'll love this. Poaching, are we? No. I'm on guard against Kumos here, see? Oh, on the lookout for Kumos, are you? Aye. The whole countryside's full of them. You must have smelt them yourself. <laughs> oh, I can't say I've smelt any Kumos here lately. You haven't got a nose for them. Kumos have a funny smell about them, see? Like a mouldy foot rubbed with blueberries. Is there some abandoned settlement somewhere nearby? Aye. At the end of the trail, through the woods. Just follow it, and you'll get to this mysterious kind of place. I saw some mercenaries going there not long ago, probably hunting Kumos. That ain't my style there. I'm more of a sneaky fella. I like to spot them at a distance, or crouch behind a wall. Who were these mercenaries? Noisy fellas with colourful fabrics. They dropped some flasks along the way. I didn't like the taste, so I stuck them under a fallen tree in the camp there. Oh, I'll gladly take them. Well, watch you don't get bellyache from it. I must remember this spot when I'm on the way back. Dead and looted. This doesn't look good. I'm here at last. I'll have to comb the whole place. The bold knight, Sir Sebastian. I suppose I should tell him about it.
már majdnem kihozom. El se hiszem. Jelek abban, mit összerabolt bandajával abban a bányászfalú. Mi a szar volt az? Csak nem. Must be someone else's hiding place. Yeah. 
I've no mercy for the likes of you. You're dead. Of course, I'd be the Innen kellett oda repülnie. Hát hol ez a személy?
épp egy malacka tévedt a disztóölésre. Na bassza meg! Gyere csak, te fosos! Mi van, csak nem fáj! No use begging. I'll give no quarter to filthy murdering heathens. Shag with you now. Dead and looted.
Look what I've got for you. You'll love this. This isn't it.
This must be someone else's hiding place. There's the good doggy. That's my boy. Now that's quite a pile. And the dagger is here. A real treasure trove.
Still on the lookout? Always! No Kumo will get past me! I hope you don't mind that I killed a few of your Kumos near here. I don't mind! They multiply like rats they do! So do mercenaries! And they'll carry on fighting each other till the end of days! Yeah!
God almighty, has something happened to you? Did someone steal your fancy clothes? Let's talk about the price. Well, we can try it. Finally, a reasonable sum.
Let's talk about the price. Hmm, all right, so. Aye, oh, that would do it. God save, what can I do for you? About that sword. God be with you. My God, what happened to you? You look like you've been assaulted. See you later. Are you in need of a helping hand, Master Butcher? Up and hand? No. But I've got a problem with supplies. I see. Nothing I can do for you then. I'm not a farmer. No, that's not what I meant. Beef and pork I can get plenty of, but the burgers here have a taste for aristocratic food. And maybe you can help me with that. You want me to poach game? Heaven forbid I would ever suggest such a thing. No, you would have to get it by, uh, other means. I don't want to spoil your plans, but game doesn't grow on trees. No, but if you happen to be walking in the woods and, uh, came across something, if you see what I mean. No, I don't see what you mean, and I don't want to. Good boy. Good morning. Bye. I'd like to discuss the price. Hmm, all right, so. What do you say to this? That's a poor offer. Ah, oh, you're flaying me here. That's a poor offer. Very well, I agree.
Look what I've got for you. You'll love this. Our Lord's tasty, good on bread and for frying. Come and get it, find things out of me, don't suppose. Look out. I'm at your service, Sir Knight. Glad you stopped by. God preserve you. Good night. Can I do something for you? Quite rightly, too. Anka, who lives by the river beneath the quarry. She says the first day your Anka was preaching, her cow gave black milk. Really? I thought Anka said she heard that from Ladder. Well, I heard it happened to Anka. Wait, did she tell you herself or not? No, I just heard. But whoever it was, someone's cow gave black milk. That's the important thing. I suppose you're right. I wish that girl would go away. Nothing good will come of it. I couldn't agree more.
What are you doing? Oh, yeah. I'm honoured that a knight such as you takes an interest in me. God be with you. Yeah. 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 What are you doing here? Are you after something?
I'm at your service, Sir Knight. I'd like to donate quite a large sum to the town. Good heavens! That's not something I hear every day. As the bailiff, naturally, I welcome every gift that benefits the town. You might like to consider some of my proposals. Well, what could I contribute the money to? A proper stone bridge is the pride of every good town. Our wooden one serves well enough for now, but God forbid that one day it should collapse under the abbot. The locals are also concerned about the floods we have from time to time. Building a better weir and embankment to contain the river would benefit the situation. Then there's the armory, which burned down a few years ago. We weren't too bothered then, but now, with all the unrest, we could do with some new hauberks, helmets, pole arms, and other things. I'll think it over. Take care. <coughs> About that, how have you? I'd like to. Con Which will it? I'd like to contribute. It will be in my name. And how much would you like? Uh, wait a. Take care. Good on Brad. Yes. Come right up. No need to For the love of God, what have you been doing? Any news about Matthias? Yes, it's incredible, but he's much better. He's still lying in bed, but he's slowly recovering his strength. And he's got his appetite back. I think he's really going to make a recovery. See, like I said, Matthias is as tough as an old boot. So this Pavel wants me to make a donation for the common good. Can you advise me who to give the money to? The infirmary could certainly use some extra coin. Decoctions for fever may not be for the common good, but I can't imagine a better cause. So should I give the money to you? No, no. There's already enough gossip about where I'm getting gifts from. The overseer takes care of all the financial matters for me and brother Nicodemus. The thing is, Pavel was concerned that the monastery's building work would swallow up all the money, but I managed to change his mind. Thank you, Henry. I'm sure the Overseer won't neglect us. Take care.
I am at your service. Whose house is it? It's our local custodians. <laughs> I'm much obliged. <laughs> Farewell. Excuse me, sir. I need... It can wait. I haven't seen Johanka for some time, but you, on the other hand, seem to be constantly running around her. Tell me, how is she? Is anything the matter with her? If anything at all is troubling her, be sure to tell her I'll be glad to help. She's doing well. I'm glad to hear it. Did she happen to mention me? Aye, she mentioned you once or twice. Did she indeed? And what did she say? Oh, you know, this and that. Well, give her my regards and tell her if she should need anything. I shall be happy to oblige in any way I can. All right, I'll tell her. And next time, she doesn't have to send you. She can come herself, can she not? I found this document in the woods by Sasau. Careful, it's a bit bloody. Don't tell me those fools got themselves. And to hell with it. And did you come across any Cumans? Yes. They're finished. There now. It's not such a fuck up after all. Here's some money for you. It was supposed to be for those idiots. But it seems they asked for a hundred groschen more than they deserved. I know about you and her. She told me everything. Oh? What exactly do you mean? You'd better be very careful what you say, boy. Oh, nothing, actually. I should think not. And in the future, think twice before speaking. God be with you. God be with you. It was young Smoller. What? Smoller's the one responsible for all the thefts and death. He tried to kill me and Leshek and God knows who else. Sweet Jesus. Where is he now? Dead. I killed him in self-defense. So is that the end of it, do you think? It looks that way. Leshek was helping him, but he's dead. So things should settle down from now on. God bless. Even so, we'll have to reconsecrate the monastery. I have a gift of money for Johanka's infirmary. Johanka's, you say? I'd like to remind you that the infirmary belongs to the monastery, which decides how to allocate donations. But of course, as long as no other serious issues arise, the infirmary will benefit. Who is the donor? Wait a while. Good luck to you.
about that de- to who do we owe our gratitude the donation is from indeed I've heard that he has openly objected to how we handle the monastery's assets is he aware of this decision I managed to convince him a donation to the monastery would be beneficial for all really sounds unlikely but so be it how much are we talking about Wait a while. May the Lord watch over you. Yeah. Yeah. So I went looking for that stash of yours. And how did you get on? There really was money there, and quite a lot of it. And I found that dagger. When you were talking about donating the money for the common good, what did you have in mind? As I said, you've no need to go any further than the Sassalgrat House or St. Martin's Church. I'm not absolutely against giving a donation to the monastery. I can only hope the overseer handles property better than before. God be with you. Yeah! I'd like to donate quite a large sum to the Sassau Church. Pro bonum commune, eh? Well, I'll be very happy to accept it. And I can even tell you what it would be used for. So you know how the common welfare will benefit. What could I contribute the money to? Well, requiem masses for the dead can shorten the time the departed spend in purgatory. The greater the donation, the more masses I can say, and the more the saints will intercede. Now our house of God is also in need of improvement. Having it decorated would certainly bring credit to the benefactor. It would also be possible to give all the money for poverty relief, so those who are not blessed with property have something to live on. I'd like to contribute to one of the things you suggested. I see. Which will it be? I want to contribute to poverty relief. It will be in the name of Pavel of Colleen. I'm just his messenger. How much are you giving? All of this. It's a generous gift. I'm glad not everyone is turning from the true faith just because some woman is making a spectacle on the square. God bless you, lad. Take care.
Somebody help me! I'll get you! Somebody help me! enough please leave me be look it was only a few groschen no excuses hand it over here you got the thrashing you deserved I hope you've learned your lesson I'll amend my life from the very foundations believe me you really let him go just like that? And did you get the loot back? I did. I have it here. Thank you, that thieving magpie. You can't trust anyone these days. Ahem. <clears throat> and just so you know, I'm no pinch purse. Here's a small reward. Thanks. What the? I did what you asked. I donated the money for the common good. Thank you. Who did you give the money to? I gave everything to the parish priest of St. Martin's. It'll help the church a lot. You know, I'd have done the same thing. Perhaps it'll ease my way through the gates of heaven. Thank you, Henry. And give my thanks to Johanka, too. It was an honor to meet an honorable, selfless man God like yourself. Okay. God be with you. Farewell, Pavel. Take care. have you been doing? About that burger from Colleen. How did it go? No, 
It wasn't at all easy. But in the end, I found the treasure and donated it to the Sasau Church. Great. If it had been easy, we wouldn't need you, would we? Uh, what about those thugs? Did they come back again? No, not at all. It's like the ground swallowed them up. But, Henry, something else has happened. Oh? What's that? The Blessed Virgin visited me again, and she gave me a new message. And I must spread the word to the people right away. What did she show you this time? You'll find out when the time is right. Do you really think that's a good idea? The reactions to your first sermon were a bit unpredictable. But what about the people who come to me and the ones we help? This is important, and it's my duty. I can't keep the Virgin's messages to myself. They're meant for everyone. If you insist. But I'd better accompany you. Thanks. Maybe it would be better to avoid the town and meet somewhere out of the way. There's a meadow near the woods by Sasau. It's not too far. We could go there. Is that really necessary? I think it would be for the best. Anyone who wants to, will come. And there are enough who do. We don't have to annoy the others. That's a good point. We'll set out tomorrow at dawn. In the meanwhile, you can sleep here if you want. I'll find you a bed. If not, just come at dawn. But don't be late. Ugh, I've been running around like the devil is on my heels. I could certainly use some sleep. Don't tempt Satan. Come on then. I'll make up a bed for you and get you something to eat. Yes, Ma. Oh, stop it. Take care. Sleep all right, Henry. Oh, like a log. I haven't slept that well for ages. There. You see how everyone gets well taken care of here. Let's get going, so we're not late. I'm right on your heels. She showed me a procession of fine people who had crowns on their heads, dressed in sumptuous cloaks with swords at their sides. But then came demons of hell. Some of the men drew their swords to battle them, but others, others began to embrace the demons. They forgot the law, forgot justice, and only used the people for their own ends. The wretched people could take no more. They stopped obeying their wicked masters and sought refuge with the princes of the just. Then the Virgin Mary came to the wicked ones. At her first step, their rich cloaks burst into flames. At her second, their swords broke into pieces. At her third, the crowns cracked on their heads. And then- Watch out, they're coming, run! Henry, 
Let there be no bloodshed. Johanka, you managed to get away? Yes, yes. They didn't even follow us. I think they just wanted to attack you. And are you all right? They didn't harm you. I'm all right. And the others, too. We're no easy mark. Praise God. It's a good thing you were there. I never thought something like that could happen. It took me by surprise, too. Be careful, Johanka. I don't like the way things are going. I will. Maybe you shouldn't speak so... critically. Someone could take offence at that. I'm only repeating what the Blessed Virgin told me. It's my duty, no matter what the obstacles. Well, if you insist. While we're on the subject, what do you think about what I preached? You spoke well. Everyone was fixed to the spot. What you said was very... interesting. You ought to tell it to the learned masters of Prague. <laughs> That'll give them something to talk about. Really, Henry? It's hard enough talking to a few villagers. Henry... There's one more thing I'd like to talk to you about. Another sinner came to me looking for help. Would you take care of that? 
What, another one? Are people not capable of looking out for themselves anymore? Well, in this case, it's true they should be able to manage alone. Well, then, why are we even talking about it? This time it's about... you. Me? Everyone sins, Henry, and you're no exception. Mm, I don't know where you're going with this, and I don't like it much. No one is entirely without sin, but we must do penance and make amends. I did a lot of good too, you know. I know, Henry. I'm not condemning you. I'm just saying you should acknowledge your sins and make amends. But what sins do you mean? You yourself should know best what you have on your conscience. Haven't you ever killed anyone, Henry? Um... All right, I killed that bastard runt. And I'd do it again. For Scalitz and for everything else he did. Never before did I want to hurt someone so much. And it felt great smashing that evil face of his. And I'm not done yet. I'll find that Mark Vart von Aulitz, and when I'm done with him, even the demons in hell will feel sorry for him. Mary, mother of God! Such rage and hatred! You mustn't... You mustn't let it take control of you. Where there is anger, there is the devil. But there was nothing else I could do. I can't help myself. I'm still so angry. Henry, if you can't learn to live with it, it will destroy you. But how? How can I reconcile myself to that? That monster killed my parents. And if you let yourself be blinded by vengeance, you'll turn into the same kind of monster as he is. I don't know how I can... Time heals all wounds. <sighs> You know, sometimes you speak like a saint. I'll try. I'll try and come to terms with it. And apart from Runt, have you ever killed someone? You told me about that murderer, but you didn't really have a choice there. But otherwise? Well, yes. But I was just defending myself, or others. I had no choice. If what you say is true, maybe you'll be forgiven. And another thing. You have coveted thy neighbor's wife. Oh. And how do you know about that? For heaven's sake, Henry. It's all over the province. I heard it from the woman down at the river when I was washing bed linen. What? If the women in Sassau were gossiping about it... Yes. You might want to avoid the road to Taunberg for a while. She seduced me. It wasn't my fault. Hmm. The Lady of Taunberg ordered me to bring a horse to her and bring wine to her chamber. What could I do? I didn't know what she was after. With that shirt and... and everything. You're saying she forced you? Well, not exactly. But when the Lady of Talmberg offers me a gift, I can hardly refuse. Well, all right. But don't forget, in the end, it's you who are responsible for your own deeds. Uh, I'll remember that. Henry, killing another human being is no trivial thing. And you did other bad things, too. You can't just wave it all away. You have to unburden your soul and repent of all your bad deeds. I said I was sorry, didn't I? That's nowhere near enough. You have to undertake a pilgrimage of penance. On the way, you'll have plenty of time to meditate on your sins. Go to Ujits. There's a Marian church there. Put on a penitent's robe and walk barefoot as a sign of humility. All right. And will that really relieve my soul? If you do it sincerely and with humility, contemplating your sins, Our Lady will see and bless you.
But what if I can't carry the weight of my sins? You've carried it up to now. Yes, because I never had to think about it. Until now. If you find the burden too great, pray, and it will be lightened. If you pass a cross or shrine along the way, stop and pray for forgiveness, and it will give you the strength to go on. God will help you to bear the weight of any sin that you sincerely repent for in your prayers. For every sin, sincere repentance at each sacred place. For every repentance, absolution. Thank you, Yahanka. I suppose facing up to my sins is really the only thing I can do now. And when you get to Ujits, pray to the Virgin Mary to intercede with God for forgiveness and mercy. And when you've finished, give a donation to the church. Oh? How much? Give the church 600 groschen. That should do. Don't waste time. Get going right away. I'll expect you back in a week.